When I grew up playing doubles and even playing college tennis, doubles strategy was never really something I thought about. As a result, I struggled with my volleys, mostly played from the baseline and looked really more like a singles player afraid to be at the net. And I've never understood how important in tennis doubles strategy was until the past few years. And even today, traveling around the state of Texas, playing USTA leagues and tournaments, I see so many players at the 3-5, 4-0, and 4-5 levels who just don't put a lot of thought into their doubles strategy. And I think that should change. So today, I want to show you how it's changed for me. Specifically, I want to share the doubles strategies I've focused on over the past few years to become a better and more confident doubles player. These strategies have actually helped me go from a low level 4-5 doubles player to playing open level tournaments. And in this video, you'll learn these strategies and how to implement them in your own doubles matches so that you can level up your game too. So let's dive into the strategies. For some of them, I do have unique kind of cheesy names to help you remember. Um, bear with me, but I hope it helps. The first double strategy is the forced self-destruction game plan. With this strategy, you force your opponent to make errors and self-destruct. I like to use this against teams that are inconsistent, and I'll also use it if I'm not playing well or early in matches if I'm not warmed up yet. The key is to make the game as simple as possible by hitting every single ball cross court. You don't even have to think about where you're hitting or worry about the opponent. Just focus on hitting a solid cross court ground stroke or volley, then get ready for the next one. When you do this, you'll miss a lot less and be able to get more shots in until the other team misses. I used this a few months ago actually in a mixed match against a few college players and they had way bigger shots than my partner and I, but after the third or fourth ball, they'd usually miss. So we won the match without hitting very many winners at all. Next is the seek and destroy strategy. If you've watched my video on how to beat a doubles team that lobs, then this will be familiar to you. To execute this strategy, you simply test out different shots on your opponent until you find their weakness. Then once you find the weakness, destroy it. A few things I like to test are high top spin to their weaker side, slow slices to the backhand, and backhand volleys. Maybe you find that they have trouble with low slices, so you keep hitting low slices until they make an adjustment. Many people abandon the strategy too early because they lose one or two points, but make your opponent beat you several times in a row before you change it up. Tennis double strategy number three is to double down on your own strengths. Now, this one seems obvious, but it makes for a good in-match thought experiment. Many people think about how to fix what they're doing wrong during doubles matches instead of doubling down on what they're doing right. For example, if I'm missing a lot of backhands, which is my weaker shot, I used to try to fix it during the match. Really, I have practice to work on my backhand. Now, instead, I simply find ways to run around it or get to the net so I don't have to hit backhands. You can use strategies like the Australian formation or the serve and volley technique to try to hide your weaknesses. Figure out how to do more of what you're good at and less of what you're not so good at and then you can use practice to work on that backhand. The fourth strategy is actually my favorite, although sometimes it can be a little costly. I call it the effort I'm gone strategy, or if you want something a little nicer, you can call it the give them the line tactic. With this approach, you're testing the opponent's ability to hit the down the line shot. I like to use this when my partner serves to their backhand side, typically on a first serve or test their down the line backhand during a rally early in the match to make sure that they see me at the net. When you do this early, you're sending a message to the opponent that they have to go through you and you'll be able to force a lot more misses later on in the match. You have to poach early before they start their swing and make them go down the alley. Obviously you might get beat, but remember it's only one point and if they miss, you might have just found their weakest shot so you can use it to get even more points and games throughout the rest of the match. The next doubles approach is called the ISO approach. You simply isolate and attack the weakest player. This works especially well in combo doubles or mixed, if one player is clearly weaker. The mistake most people make 
when they do this is they only hit 60 or 70 percent of the shots at the weaker player really you should be hitting 90 percent or more of the shots at the weaker player when i implement this i usually try to hit every ball at their backhand side whether they're at the net or the baseline you have to put your empathy aside for this one but it is really effective if you're trying to win the next strategy is one i use in almost every match especially against a serve and volley team Credit goes to my college teammate, Reed, for the name for this one. I call it the shoe shine technique. As you know, volleys from your feet are much more difficult than volleys from your waist level or even your knees. You need to have good topspin on your ground strokes to do this and play the ball at their feet. You have to keep the ball low over the net and let your topspin dip it down to their feet to give them a shoe shine. This is a great chance for you or your partner to poach or come into the net since the volley at their feet will be popped up. The seventh strategy I call blow up Broadway. This actually works against a variety of doubles teams and all you have to do is hit every ball down the middle of the court over the middle net strap. If they don't poach much at the net, hitting your shots down the middle will take away the angles of the player at the baseline and you'll probably get the net player to reach for a few volleys and miss. Even against doubles teams that do like to play at the net, this can cause a lot of confusion over who should get it. It's an especially good strategy returning from the ad side since the opponent has a backhand volley. This next one is probably the only double strategy I knew as a junior tennis player. It's simple but effective. It's the deep topspin to the backhand. It works against baseline teams because it gets them on their heels, hitting their weaker shot. It also gives you an opportunity to come into the net or poach and force a difficult down the line shot. This part I didn't do as a junior, but have found it works really well in singles and doubles. Once you feel the ball come off your racket and you know you hit a deep shot with heavy topspin, move forward for an easy volley. The last double strategy is one of the most well-known. It's the serve and volley or crowd the net technique. I noticed that when I play a team that crowds the net, my unforced errors automatically go up. Now, why is that? It's because when you crowd the net, you force the opponent to go for more on their forehand and backhand ground strokes. They really have to hit a passing shot, or at least they feel like they do. The key is to practice and get good at the half volley. Most people take too big a swing or have their strings pointed up when they hit the half volley, and this causes the ball to pop up. If you keep your strings pointed out and your swing short, you can hit a good half volley that stays low cross court over the net. Then once you're at the net, you need to communicate with your partner over who gets the balls in the middle and who's going to cover the lob. Typically, the forehand volley should cover the ball in the middle, and then the other player can get the lob. If you learned something new in this video, then subscribe to the Tennis Tribe channel below. To check out more tennis double strategies, go to my website, thetennistribe.com. And if you enter your email, you'll get a free 10-page double strategy playbook. And I'll send you my best lessons every single week. So tell me, what's your favorite double strategy in tennis? Comment below with your favorite from the video. Or if there's one I left out, comment below. I would love to hear it.